Today we are building a budget to mid tier system inside of a brand new Corsair case just releasing today. We're going to be utilizing the iGame RTX 3050 graphics card paired with an i5 CPU. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Guys, this is Corsair's brand new iQ 5000T case launching today. I cannot wait to do a build in this system. I know we're going for a budget build, but I just cannot help myself. I have to use this case. I'm gonna see what we can build inside of this with some budget or oh, mid-tier components. Uh, I know the GPU that we're gonna be using is gonna look super small in this, so we might even use two reservoirs for the CPU loop just to fill out this case. I'm pretty sure it uses the same system as the 5000D. I may be wrong there, but we can take a closer look at it once I've got it outside of this box. It is also the white version that we're going to be using today, and I'm sure there's going to be many other channels with the black version if that's something you want to check out after this video. But to me, I'm really enjoying doing these white builds lately. They, they're just super clean. They do extremely well. They look super nice. So let's go ahead and I'll time lapse the rest getting this unboxed. So this is what the case looks like. It does look like the 5000D, 5000X. Uh, on the inside, it's just the main differences that I can see here are the outside panels. The 5000D is more of like a, I guess, a box shape, whereas this one has some more uh, curved panels, I guess, which is a nice sort of flow throughout the case, especially down the bottom as well. It's got the pedestal feet, I would call them. Kind of looks like it's, um, up and presented in a way. And the panels up the top and down the bottom, back and front, they have LED strips. Uh, so that's gonna be a nice touch for anyone who wants case lighting, some nice uh, lighting you know, around the desk, ambient lighting behind it. That's gonna look real nice in the system. It does come with three pre-installed RGB fans and the front is a nice mesh panel as well with a filter. So. It's gonna keep dust out. It's got, gonna look really nice. And also this little, uh, I guess, cable hider there, behind that is an option to install another 360 millimeter radiator of three fans. So it's gonna look real nice. Let's go ahead and get building. Man, I'm so glad to be finally doing a budget system using the brand new ROG Minimus Z690 Hero motherboard. Def, def, definitely the Minimus. That's definitely a uh, definitely a budget motherboard. No, don't question me, okay? The brand new Minimus Z690 from ASUS. In all honesty, guys, I don't really have any budget motherboards. This is our Intel Core i5 12600K CPU. This has 10 cores, 16 threads, with six of the cores being performance cores and four being efficiency cores. Uh, now. The way they work the uh, threads and everything out is there is usually two threads per performance core and one thread per efficiency core, hence why it's 16 and not double the amount of cores. But this is gonna go real nice in the system. This is our most, I guess, budget-friendly, up-to-date CPU that we have, so cannot wait to see how this performs. All right, how to install a CPU. Find where the little triangle corner is on the CPU and where the little triangle is on the uh, protective cap. All you have to do is push the lever down and push it backwards. You can now open this part up and you install the CPU, making sure to line up the little notches on here very carefully and then just drop it. I like to give it just a tiny wiggle when it's in to make sure that it's properly in place. Leaving the cap on, you can push this down and put the locking lever over 
and push it in and lock it in place. This will automatically remove this and you can just take this away and store it in a motherboard box. I was meant to do a build with the MP600 uh, Pro NVMe SSDs, but I decided since we're gonna be doing a budget build this time, we'll put them in a future build and utilize the MP600 core, which is Corsair's more budget friendly NVMe SSD. It's a little slower on the speeds, but it's still got plenty of speed and that's what matters for this system. So for a budget system, this is the perfect NVMe drive. So we're gonna go ahead and utilize this one terabyte drive. A motherboard usually has multiple NVMe spots, but you wanna put your NVMe slot in the first one generally to begin with. Some motherboards have a Gen 4 slot up the top and then the rest are Gen 3. Uh, Z690, however, has all Gen 4 now. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab your NVMe drive and you wanna line it up and push it in at a 45 degree angle. That'll automatically click in place. Then you can push it down and either screw it in on most motherboards or Asus has this locking mechanism where you just push it to the side and it locks it in place. Then you can go ahead and make sure that you remove the protective film uh, on the heat spreader so that it can take away all of the heat from the NVMe when it's in use. You can go ahead, apply this back on, and then we can do it up if we can get the screwdriver in the screw. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Okay guys, so I understand this RAM is not budget in any way, shape or form. However, it is so hard to come across some DDR5 RAM at the moment. This is pretty much all we have and I haven't filled up all four slots of a build yet, so I wanna give that a go with these four RAM sticks here. I could just put two in there and it'll be a little more budget friendly than four, but you know we wanna make the build look cool as well, so that's why I'm going with the four sticks rather than two. So let's go ahead, let's get all of these unboxed. I understand it's white as well. The initial intentions of this whole build were to make it a fully white, custom water-cooled PC, but things haven't arrived on time and it's due on the 15th, which is when you guys are seeing this video. And so we're gonna be doing another build utilizing these four RAM sticks in an all white system when I get a faulty motherboard back from return. So I hope you all enjoy this build. RAM is also fairly straightforward. All you have to do is release these latches. Sometimes there are latches on the second side as well. Line up the RAM stick. It can only be pushed in one way. So once you've got it in the two slots, push down on one side, push down on the other until you hear it click. It's as simple as that. And then you can just repeat the process with all four or two of the sticks. If you have two, you want them in slots A2 and B2. So again, one, two, and the last one. One, two. This is the Corsair XC7 RGB Pro in white. Uh, this is now has mounting for the LGA 1700 socket. Uh, not that we really need a 1700 socket um, CPU block because all ASUS motherboards have mounting for previous generation and current generation 1700, which is a really cool thing that they did. I can't wait to put this on the motherboard. It's gonna look fantastic. Now that that is done, we can go ahead and install our CPU block. This CPU block comes pre-applied with thermal paste. So all we have to do is line it up with the screw holes like so, and then tighten it down. Guys, once again, I wanna thank you all for the support, for the subscribers, for liking the video, for all the comments recently. It's been much appreciated, especially when moving and trying out some new styles and formats. If you guys enjoy this style and format of us talking through the video, please let us know down in the comments because constructive criticism is the only way to improve. While you're at it, consider subscribing if you enjoy content like this. It really helps us out. It lets us know, hey, we enjoy this content. We're gonna subscribe, we're gonna support you, and I'm gonna do my best to support you guys back. Okay, so we have the Corsair QL120 RGB fans going into the system. The lighting on these look absolutely brilliant and these are super easy to film. A lot of other fans out there, the RGB is a little too bright and, and white and it kind of comes out white on camera. So 
These are gonna look really nice in the system and cannot wait to install them. So for this particular system, I wanna create uh, a nice loop for the CPU. So I've got two 360 millimeter radiators in white from Corsair. And depending on what the, uh, how the case is like, the brand new case will depend on whether I use two 360 millimeter radiators or one 360 and one 240, because I do have a 240 on hand. Uh, but ideally, if I could fit two 360 radiators in, which I'm pretty sure I can, because I'm, I think the uh, chassis is pretty similar to the 5000D, and I know I can fit two in there. Um, hopefully that's the case, and we'll have optimal cooling for our CPU. Not that it needs it, but you guys know that we love our water cooling on this channel. While we're installing the radios and fans, I just wanted to let you guys know about our monthly Discord giveaways that we're running and hosting over on our Discord server exclusively. I'd love to see you guys over there. I'll leave a link in the video description. If you guys want to enter, just keep an eye out for the announcements all over on our Discord. We'd love to have you in the chat. If you guys need any PC help or want to ask me a question or leave any suggestions, it's a great place to go, meet new members, and enjoy the community. So I'd love to see you guys over there. Link is in the description. Okay guys, I am super excited about this GPU. Even though it's a 3050, we haven't had anything like this before. So this is gonna be our first, I would say semi-budget build but we're utilizing the iGame 3050. And um, I mean, so far seeing the pictures, it looks excellent. And look at this, what a little beauty. This is actually gonna be going in a big case. So I'm gonna fill it up with some water cooling for the CPU loop, just to make it fill out the build and kind of look like it's meant to be there. But I wanna test this bad boy in some games as well. So how about we give that a go? The iGame Ultra Duo OC RTX 3050 comes with a base clock of 1552 MHz, 1822 MHz boost clock with a memory clock of 1750. It has 8GB of G6 memory with a 128-bit memory bus. The card only has one 8-pin for the power and it consumes up to around 130 watts. Let's get this installed. This is the Corsair RM850 watt power supply. Uh, all white design as well. So it's gonna go real nice with the system even though some of our parts are black. There's not much we can do about that because our white motherboard, as I said, is in for RMA. But this white power supply is gonna look real nice. Not, not that we're gonna be seeing it anyway, but it's just nice to know that we have it in there. Uh, this is a gold rated power supply as well. So I'd say it's kind of like mid tier, uh, not necessarily budget, but it's certainly not high end. So it's as close to budget as we can get. Now I want to cover the whole back section so that there is no visible cables. I ended up measuring and creating this panel in Adobe Illustrator. I was able to send this to the laser cutter and then I cut it out in my acrylic. Then I was able to layer some paint on there, that's two coats of white. And once that was dried, I was able to install it to hide all of the cables. Now this particular panel was just installed with some double-sided tape. However, you can actually screw it in as well because there are some free holes which are already threaded on the actual back motherboard tray. This is the Corsair XD5 RGB in white. We have two of them because I'm worried the GPU is gonna look a little small in the case. So by putting two of them, we're gonna fill out a lot more space and should look really nice. Uh, I don't know what else to really say about it. So got a D5 pump inside, it's got RGB lighting, 
two of them in series, they look real nice. So in the end, we only needed one of the XD5 pump rest combos. We ended up taking the section out to allow more room for the radiator and fans, so we could only end up putting one in anyway. By playing this in front of where the grommet hole used to be, we were able to lay the cable straight through and into the backside, and the reservoir itself was able to hide those cables, so it made for a nice clean look, especially once it was filled up. You can't see through it, so you can't see any of the cables. Now lastly is our tubing. We ended up going with 12 millimeter frosted tubing from Corsair and we ended up getting most of the bends done first time However, there were a couple of pieces which we did not get quite right But in the end of the day I always say to buy extra tubing when you're doing your water cooling because no one ever gets it perfect 100% of the time some people have good days some have bad days So it's always good to have that little bit extra Okay guys, so check this out. We've dropped into PUBG. We're running at 1440p. We're on the ground now and look at that FPS up there with our 3050 graphics card. We're sitting at about 210 FPS running around here in 1440p. So if you're on a budget and you're playing games like PUBG, this is certainly a great graphics card for the individual who doesn't want to spend too much money on a PC, especially with those inflated graphics card prices. Right now, sitting at 185 FPS, I'd say this is quite a score for anyone looking for a budget gaming PC. This next game is Metro Exodus. We've got it on high settings, 1080p. You can see up here, we have the FPS counter. It's sitting at about 70 to 90 FPS at the moment. Obviously, depending on the scene, when it gets more graphical, uh, it seems to drop to around 40. So 1080p, high settings, we ended up achieving 59.3 FPS on average, so basically 60 FPS. Metro Exodus 1440p, I was able to achieve around 45 FPS on average, and if I was to take the settings from high to low on 1440p, I'd be able to get it up into the 50s. However, I believe that this graphics card is more built for those 1080p gaming experiences on the more graphics intensive games. Uh, but something like, you know, GTA 5 or something like that, you could easily do 1440p, no problem, on a RTX 
3050 graphics card. So now we have Grand Theft Auto 5 running in 1440p and you can see here we are almost at 120 FPS. It varies depending on the scene but we've seen anywhere from like 90 FPS all the way up to 150 FPS which is absolutely incredible for an RTX 3050. So if you guys are after a decent gaming PC an RTX 3050 might be something to look at if you're on a budget. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the build. Consider joining our Discord, link down in the description. I'll have all of the links for the parts down there as well. And make sure you subscribe. Leave your comments down below. What did you like about this new case? What about the RTX 3050 GPU from iGame? And don't forget, if you'd like to support the channel, Patreon or YouTube channel memberships is the best way to do that. All of the links will be down below. And we'll see you all in the next one.